Hello, everybody, and welcome to April. We are so excited that you're here and are looking forward to our discussion. The top five uh, employee benefits to offer for experienced job seekers and your best employees. We are so excited today about our lineup of guest speakers and are thankful that they have taken the time today to share their best practices with all of us. Can anyone else relate to this video? I know I sure can. So big shout out to all the other people out there juggling it all. If only it was as easy as snapping your finger to make it all happen, definitely isn't for me. And I certainly don't look like Elisa Keys. She's definitely on fire. Uh, but this is our workforce, everyone. And a great reminder as we are determining the benefits that meet the needs of the people who are out there doing it all. James, you can pop us to the next slide. Thank you. My name is Jessica Miller, and I'm the Director of Workforce Strategy for the Minnesota Department of Employment and Economic Development, and we are so happy to have you here with us today. If you're new here, thank you so much for joining us, and if you're returning, thank you for coming back again. Take a second, introduce yourself in chat. We want to know who you are and what you do. Our team of consultants work regionally, which means that each consultant will have a slightly different way that they do their work based on the region that they're supporting. But the common core ways that we support our employers are identified here on this slide. We work with you to identify gaps in your current strategies, ensure that you are connected to your local, regional, and state workforce partners, and we assist you in building strategies that will help you attract and retain workforce. I'm happy to share that we have a new consultant on our team. Megan Lynch has joined us and is supporting our Southwest and South Central region. And she comes with us uh, with a background, a robust background in human resource management, recruiting, retaining employees. And we're so lucky to have our her on our team. If you want to give a, a wave there, Megan. If Hi. You are, there she is. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Megan. Um, our consultation process is rooted and informed by data and is developed specifically with your company's needs and goals in mind. We serve you uh, at, and we serve as your guide through this process and convene workforce partners for support. We share training grant opportunities and continually check in to ensure progress is being made and assist in making adjustments along the way. When you work with us, you're automatically connected to a wide network of people and partners who work collaboratively for the success of our state our regions, our communities, so that your business and our workforce can thrive. We absolutely don't do this work alone, and it takes many people to bring success to these efforts. You'll see on this slide that we have our 2024 lineup available for registration. You spoke, we listened, we incorporated your feedback into these topics, and we'll continue to weave your needs into our sessions for the rest of the year and into next year. So if you see something that's not on this list and you're very interested in learning about that for next year, put that in the evaluation. We would love to hear from you. Our session will go today until 12 p.m., after which we'll segue into our 30-minute unplugged portion of the event where we invite you to turn on your cameras, unmute yourself, and ask questions of our panelists, as well as our team of workforce strategy consultants verbally through chat. Uh, we want to hear from you. I would also like to take a moment to encourage you to fill out the evaluation at the end of our time here together. We will get that link popped into chat uh, for you. As always, these webinars are recorded and available to view at any time via YouTube, as well as our QueerForceMN.com website, where you will also find recordings and resources from this session, as well as our previous sessions. We will absolutely be utilizing our chat feature today throughout our time. Please ask questions, answer questions, and interact with our guests, consultants, partners, and each other. We really want to build upon the community that we've started here and welcome your engagement. We have a super packed agenda today with some amazing guests who have dedicated their careers to being change makers and culture shakers. So without further ado, it's my privilege to introduce you to our central-based workforce strategy consultant. You all know her and you love her, Della Ludwig. Thanks, Jess. Good morning, everyone. I'm Della. I'm the Workforce Strategy Consultant for Central Minnesota, just like Jess just announced. Today, our presentation is going to focus on the top five employee benefits to offer experienced job seekers and your best employees. 
Our agenda is going to um, focus and consist of defining employee benefits, the cost of offering benefits, and an overview of the top five benefits to offer your experienced job seekers and your best employees, which then leads to greater employee satisfaction and retention. We'll hear from a diverse panel of employers and on how they recruit and retain their employees through their employee benefit options and strong culture. Then at 12 noon, we'll start our unplugged session. This is when you can then turn on your microphones and video and personally join the conversation and ask your questions directly to the panelists and to our consultants. We will um, also be taking questions throughout the presentation, so definitely keep your chat box open and share your ideas and questions at that point, at any point. So today's workforce needs, much of our current um, workforce is looking for new opportunities that better align with their values, like flexibility, self-development, paid time off, and strong culture. Employee benefits have become just as important as pay when trying to recruit and retain uh, the most skilled workforce. Providing a comprehensive benefit package to employees is essential to reducing employee turnover, improving employee engagement, and attracting top talent. While the cost of benefits might be rising, it's critical, it's a critical investment in your employees um, to ensure low turnover and increase job satisfaction. And the best job benefits you can offer are those tailored to meet the individual needs of your employees um, at different stages of their careers. So let's take a look at the average cost of these benefits. The Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics released the employer costs of employee compensation in December. The Midwest average compensation in private industry is 24.75 per hour or 69% of an employee's compensation. When you include basic benefits like paid leave, supplemental pay, uh, which includes overtime or shift differential, insurance, retirement, and legally required benefits like Medicare and Social Security, it adds another $11.07 per hour, which equals about 30.9% of the cost of the employees uh, for benefits. So if you're paying your employee 24.75 an hour, um, an additional 11.07 in benefits is is comes to a total of 35.82 uh, for that employee. Um, this would then include or does not include any of the fringe benefits or unique or extraordinary benefits that you offer employees, uh, such as referral bonus uh, referral bonuses, luncheons, holiday parties paid maternity or paternity leave, or even life insurance. So what exactly are employee benefits? Employee benefits are indirect, non-cash, or cash compensation paid to employees by their employer, in addition to the annual salary or wages. Some employee benefits are required by law, like social security or unemployment. But the best employee benefits offer more than government requirements. They support employees' mental, physical, emotional, and financial health. Companies offering these benefits are often rewarded with greater employee satisfaction and retention. Great employee benefits are also important because they offset living expenses, they improve employee satisfaction, they help keep employees healthy, uh, prevent burnout, improve the quality of life, prevent absences, increase company loyalty, and improve employee engagement. All of this can lead to an enhanced company culture and reduce employee turnover. Employees will always take more money if you offer it but pay alone isn't necessarily all it takes to attract and keep good employees. 
In a survey of employed workers and employers, Forbes advisor found that 40% of employers say workers leave their job to find a role that offers better employee benefits. The survey also found that 62% of businesses have changed their benefits, uh, benefit offerings in the past year. Uh, we'll take a couple minutes now to do our own survey to see what you think the top employee benefits are that employees want from their employer. So we're gonna go ahead and switch screens and take this uh, either, you can use a, either use that QR code or we can go directly to menti.com and we're gonna be able to enter this code just in a quick second here. So you can either scan the QR code and you get, um, you're able to enter two of your favorite and the ones that are entered the most are gonna be the largest. You can see health insurance, flexibility, PTO, fair pay, family life insurance, mental health insurance, time off, So we're seeing a lot of PTO, time off, child care is on there, support, flexibility is huge, health insurance, flexible schedule, scheduling. Okay, has everybody had a chance? So far we've gotten 115 responses on here, which is really cool. We'll keep the survey open and we'll make sure we add this in as we continue. Um, but it really looks like that flexibility, paid time off, um, health insurance is huge in this survey. So now let's see what Forbes says. So Forbes recently did a survey and some of their top results um, focused on what the employees wanted versus what the employers actually provided. So why is this important? Only 54% of American workers report being content with the benefits their current employer offers. One in 10 workers would take a pay cut to have access to better benefits. Nearly 40% of 42 to 57 year olds are most likely to want mandatory paid time off from their employer. And over 80% of employees older than 42 are looking for roles that include that employer cover health and health care. So as you can see, the top three benefits align, but they then, but then the last two listed, you see employees wanting mandatory paid time off over health insurance, or I'm sorry, mental health assistance, even though they're still important. Um, it's more important than the employee discounts. So fringe benefits, employers prioritize, uh, employers priorities ref uh, reflect a trend of attempting to entice employees back into the office while ignoring what employees are truly asking for. While flexible hours is the number one benefit that employees want from employers at 51% surveyed, only 31% of employers thought it was important to their employees. Employers also prioritize team bonding activities and company retreats for their employees versus focusing on the individual needs of their employees, like work from home and professional development.
Remote employees also wanted flexible hours, work equipment provided, and home office stipend, where employers significantly misjudge the importance of virtual team bonding activities for their employees. Another top five benefit for employees, even though it was just at 6%, um, was the internet assistance. This perk didn't break into the employer's top five at all, but this is worth taking a look at just because of reliable internet service is vital to remote workers' ability to do their job. And employees may need to opt for more expensive internet service or hotspot backups to stay connected for work. And one last survey that we're gonna look at is just the Harvard Business Review who surveyed 2000 workers and found that when choosing between high paying jobs and lower paying one with benefits, men and women defer and how much um, various perks may sway them. But again, notice flexible hours, vacation, and work from home at the top of the list, right behind health insurance. There's quite a few businesses that are paving the way and definitely can look at these individually, but due to time, we're just gonna take a peek at a few of them. So Facebook offers four months of paid paternal leave and $4,000 uh, bonus to employees who just had a newborn. They also offer an arcade full of video games, um, a wellness allowance, and on-site barbershop, among other perks. Google offers free food, on-campus cooking classes, a gym with free, coach, uh, free coaches and classes, celebrity talks, and massage therapists. They also offer a generous death benefit that pays a, de uh, pays a deceased employee's spouse or partner 50% of their salary for up to 10 years. And Campbell Soup Company offers 100% health coverage, on-site fitness center, and free flu shots. It also offers subsidized and health meal options in its cafeteria along with cooking lessons. Campbell's has some of the best benefits for parents as they also provide full kindergarten, daycare centers, and after-school programs for their kids up to the age of 12. So why do employees quit? Contrary to what you might believe, salary isn't the most obvious deal breaker for employees. It's an important element but pay is rivaled by other forms of compensation and driving employees to move on to new opportunities. Pay was once the majority reason for employees leaving. It now has other reasons closely following, including better benefits, better advancement opportunities, and flexible work options. So now we're going to shift gears and introduce our panelists. And um, first we have Kate from UCARE, and then we have Veronica from Caribou Coffee, and Michelle from Marvin joining us. Kate um, has been at UCARE since October 31st, 2017, Halloween, she was hired. She has uh, seen the organization organization grow from 600 employees to over 1600. Um, she has worked in talent acquisition her entire career, previously with Alliance, Life, and Thrivent Financial Services. Kate is now a talent acquisition manager at UCARE, which is a not-for-profit uh, health insurance provider. They serve Minnesota and parts of Western Wisconsin. The majority of the members are Medicare, Medicaid eligible. However, they do offer individual health plan products through Minsure. In total, they have just over 600,000 members, making them the fourth largest health plan in Minnesota. UCARE has just over 1,600 employees 
and have made Star Tribune's top workplace for 14 years in a row and are number 22 on US Today's top workplaces for 2024 among employees with 1,000 to 2,499 employees. Kate has a bachelor's degree from Luther College in Iowa, master's in HR management from St. Mary's University, and an MBA from St. Thomas. Her role at UCARE has expanded from being the sole recruiter um, to building a team of recruiters to now focusing on workforce planning and expansion efforts as they look to move into other states. Welcome, Kate. Veronica is pictured here with her adorable little daughter, Annabelle, and has been a recruiter with Caribou Coffee for two and a half years, but has been with the company for over 12 years. She has started, uh, she started um, her career, Caribou Coffee career as a shift leader in St. Paul and then developed into a general manager then transitioned to working in talent acquisition. Her passion in recruiting comes from a love of connecting with community and helping eliminate barriers when it comes to employment and advancement. Uh, our workforce strategy team has gotten to know Veronica through her close work with our Metro Workforce Consultant at Ajewa. And I'm excited to hear more about uh, more from Veronica today. Welcome, Veronica. And lastly, we have Michelle, who is a senior manager from Human Resources and um, who is a manager of Human Resources and Talent Acquisition at Marvin in War Road, Minnesota. Michelle has been with Marvin for three years and is originally from Bemidji. Her areas of expertise are in disability, employment, ADA, and employee engagement. Marvin is a family owned and led company driven by purpose to imagine and create better ways of living. Together they have nearly 7,000 employees across the United States and design, engineer, and build premium doors, windows, and skylights. Marvin has maintained its commitment to the community of War Road for more than 110 years along with expansions to North Dakota, Oregon, Tennessee, Virginia, Florida, Iowa, and Colorado. INC or Inc. Magazine, known for its annual ranking uh, for fastest growing companies, named Marvin as one of its 2022 Best in Business honorees. The list highlights businesses that demonstrate foresight, caring, and dedication to prioritize positive impact, for clients and customers, community, industry, environment, and even society as a whole. Welcome, Michelle. All right, here we go. How's everybody doing? Ready for some good questions? All right, Kate, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> I'm ready. So you care was named Star Tribune's top workplace for 14 years in a row and number 22 on USA Today's top workplace for 2024 among employees with um, 1,000 to 2,499 employees. What does this mean to your organization as a recruiting tool? and for intern and for your internal culture? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I might first start um, by addressing our internal culture and say that this is something that is incredibly important to our organization and something that we're incredibly um, proud of. Our president and CEO, Hillary Martin Resnick, um, actually has an HR background as well, and she uh, takes this survey very seriously. Um, there are only actually four companies that have made the list 14 years in a row. And we this year um, had 95% participation in this survey. 
Um, the survey is done by Star Tribune's uh, vendor. There is, you know, no incentive from our employees to complete this survey other than to talk about, you know, how great um, our our organization is and in, in the the way they feel about the organization and um, and so being able to share that with others and the mission that our organization has is really um, you know something that we're very proud of from a recruiting standpoint it's excellent mark marketing um, you know obviously if you're on that list for 14 years in a row um, there's something great about what you're doing and a lot of people talk about um, the fact that we are mission driven we're we're people powered you see it out there you know with our advertising um, we when you're within the organization and you're and you're working, um, and even people who interview, you can feel that everyone there is there to help make a difference, and we're all working towards the overall same goal. Um, but it, you know, from from a recruiting standpoint, a lot of people will say, "No, you're on the top workplaces. That's what draws me to to take a look at you care, and at least gets them to your page, and then from there, it's up to you to to keep them." engaged and really get them um you know through the rest of the process um so yeah that's awesome michelle that's pretty similar to with you guys having the 2022 best in business you know honorees and some of the awards that you've received with marvin how does this also affect your culture and and some of your um, recruiting efforts well, I'm going to upstage it just a little bit because just recently we found out that we are actually in the top 20 on the Forbes uh, largest employers list. So sandwiched right between uh, Google and Microsoft, actually. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, and our CEO, Paul Marvin, really said it best when he said that it's essential that our people and culture come first, because that's how we ended up on that list. Um, we know that those investments uh, come and go to those we make sure have good well being. So our culture starts from the moment that anybody first interviews with Marvin, and that extends all the way until the day they retire. Uh, we try to build in moments to celebrate our employees and teams through all of their milestones and their careers with Marvin, from parties to extra PTO to all sorts of things to really celebrate our employees. Um, we celebrate our employees who truly exemplify our values, and you'll probably hear me say that a lot today. Our values are truly the foundation on which all of that is built. Um, and we do that annually. We pick six employees from across the company to celebrate those values and, and be recognized as the Yellow Rose winner for um, our employee. And, and finally, we have dedicated workplace experience teams. Their job is to help contribute to that culture, to design activities, to help people feel welcome at Marvin and really engage those employees on multiple different levels. Excellent. Thanks so much, Michelle. Veronica, what are some of the benefits that you offer, especially some of the generational workers, and why has this become so successful for Caribou? Yeah, um, great question. So what I've noticed as far as when I'm recruiting, when I'm interviewing things, people of different generations ask different things of the company, ask about different benefits. So like our younger generations that are just entering the workforce don't really care too much about health insurance because they're still on their parents' plan until they're 25. What they're really looking for is, is it flexible? Can I work from home? Am I allowed to like travel to visit my family and work remotely that way? Or am I able to have some mental health benefits that can really help get me through the work day and help get me into that next phase in my life. What about my development? Where when we're talking about some of the next generation, that older generation in their 30s, their 40s, they're thinking more about their family, that planning, that retirement. Are there 401k benefits? Um, what about my paternity, maternity leave? Um, kind of really in that building stage in their life where when we're talking that later generation, 50s, 60s and above, a lot of the times they're looking for can you set me up for retirement? 
can you set me up so that I can be successful and retire at my goal age? So really focusing in on which benefits will benefit who and kind of making sure we have that like wide variety to offer people and not just focus on what we think one select group might want, but what the whole group might want to make sure that we're catering to each generation and to each individual person as they grow with our company. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. So how does your organization support its employees by offering different benefits and building a dedicated workforce um, that decreases your turnover or strengthens its culture? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to, to Kate on that. <laughs> Yeah, um, so some of the things that um, it came to mind as I was thinking about this question, so we have incredibly low turnover. Again, another thing we're really proud of, our preventable preventable turnover rate is 3.6% compared to, you know, roughly 7, 7%. Um, you know, I, I think there are many things that contribute to this, um, you know, not just your benefits, but one of it, um, is like we like we mentioned company culture. What is your company culture and how do you build things around that? Um, you know, one of our things is our employee engagement survey that we do yearly. Um, and it is very important to not only our senior leaders, but our, our CEO, we um, she reads every comment. Um, we have action items that come out of that for every department. Um, we, uh, you know, we have a very, also very robust um, benefit um, plan, whether it's like PTO. Um, one thing that's really great that not a lot of places do anymore is we don't um, cap the amount of PTO you can carry over. Um, you can carry over up to 150% of your PTO year over year. We have the ability to, you can cash out so your PTO, whether you want the cash or you want to take it to your 401k. Um, our medical benefits are incredibly rich. Um, premiums are low, but the coverage you get is really great. Um, you know, an, another thing that we um, do um, is we, you know, ensure that each, you know, department has training dollars as well. Um, we're not going to tell you how to use those dollars. Um, this is on top of the training opportunities we offer, but, you know, this is to support employees and what they want to accomplish when it comes to their career, their growth, their development, since that means something different to everyone or what what each individual's goals are, are different. Um, so we can really take a, a personalized approach. So those are some of the things we do. I love that individualized goals. That's really cool. Um, Veronica, did you have anything else you wanted to add? It's, it's a pretty similar question that you already answered, but I'll give you another no. chance. <laughs> no, you're all good. Um, so she was talking a little bit about of how like you tailor people's development. Um, I a really great example of that. Uh, starting out as a shift leader at Caribou, it was I had come from a previous company where I had been scarred a little bit and I was terrified of leadership and being able to come into a company where like my my leaders or their leaders walking in wasn't a scary thing it was a fun thing was completely different and was a huge culture shift for me and then that made me want to go okay i love this i love the feeling i'm getting from everyone here whether it be like we had ceos walking in we'd have um, everything from district leaders walking in and it was it was great i wanted to be a part of that um, so I developed myself and with the partnership of my leaders at the time, figured out what my path was, what my passion was. And then when someone did that for me, I said, OK, I can do this for others. And I helped develop 50 plus GMs within Caribou, uh, helped people really find their career path, have done some career mentoring. And just that's encouraged in our culture. And that is so huge for someone my age and just even people younger than me that we genuinely care about what you want to do we're not going to force you to go down a path you don't want to go down i could have gone down 
the multi-leadership unit path, but I hate math, so I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so my leaders said, okay, you don't want to do that path. Let's find you another one and partnered me with the HR team. And I started doing recruiting events and community connections. And I was like, this is it. I want to go here. And not a single person stepped in my way and said that wasn't possible because I don't have a degree in it. They okay. said, yeah, let's figure it out. Let's develop you. Let's get there. And that is a huge benefit that the workforce wants. We don't want you to say you'll develop us and then not get that development, not get that promotion, not get that next step. We want you to genuinely help us through because we don't know how to do it. It's not necessarily taught in high school. So right. it's a skill we have to learn and lean on others. So it's a huge benefit to be able to have that development mindset and that really lean in from your leaders to be able to advance your career and get you to that next step, get your family to that next step. Or the cookie cutter training, right, Veronica? Yeah, like you said, not it was everyone tailored. learns the same. I right. suck at school. I am <laughs> not one who can sit in a classroom and listen to someone talk at me. But if you put me in a situation where I can learn with my hands on and really push me and tell me that I can do this, I will succeed. And a lot of the workforce is that way. We're not going to it's not going to be able to be developed with that cookie cutter. You have to tailor it for us because everyone does learn differently. And that acknowledgement from employers is so incredibly important and will help with retention. Give them a variety of ways to learn. Give them a variety of ways to develop. I love it. I think Veronica brings up a great point in that as employers, we're here to support our employees with their growth and their development. You are really the driver of your, and you are the owner of your future. Um, it's not your manager's responsibility. It's not leadership's responsibility. We're here to support you, and we should be having those open conversations, those honest conversations, whether it is leadership, whether it's, you know, more of a technical SME, um, you know, ladder that you want to go to and how can we get you there um we don't want anyone to go or feel like they they have to be a leader because that's what they think the next path is it's really what is going to make you successful and engaged and how can we remove barriers um mm -hmm. to get you there and you have yeah. to have that open communication or culture absolutely that people feels yeah yeah as yeah as a yeah. store manager i had a ton of employees who they stayed with me three five years they had no desire to be a general manager. They did not want that. They didn't want to be a leader. They wanted to learn skills. So I figured out like what they were studying in high school. Okay, or what you're studying in college. What's your passion? Great, let me, you love finance? Great, I hate inventory. So let's get you to learn that. Or like we have store sets we have to do and I don't have an eye for design. If I could, my house would be painted the walls all white. So I had some students who were in marketing or in design and I was like, great here's all this material, the store needs to look pretty, go for it. And that's why they stayed as long as they did, because even though they weren't advancing, they were still learning. And it wasn't every day was the same day. Right. So Michelle, what are some of the things that you offer um, your employees just to help build that dedicated workforce and, and decrease that turnover? Sure. Um, so like I said before, we're really a, a purpose driven and values based organization. And a couple of years ago, we took our uh, vision, which is to uh, improve your way of living with windows, right? Mm -hmm. And we decided to take that vision and turn it inward on our employees. And we created this better living framework. And um, so all of our benefits fit into these five different buckets. And so we've created these pillars because they're different for everybody and what they want is different. So it's things like engaging in life, feeling happy and healthy, feeling fulfilled at work, thriving financially and growing as a person. And so we've designed our benefits around those five pillars. And some examples of those things we've done um, are things like on-site mental health support. We have an on-site clinic here in War Road, and we've created spaces for our employees to be able to have uh, virtual therapy appointments within the plant so that they don't have to leave. They don't have to take that time away from work. It's paid time. So it's a way for them to be able to take care of themselves and continue to work. We have our longstanding annual profit sharing program. 
and and that is based on your part of it is based on your tenure with with Marvin. The longer you're here, the little bit more you get of that. We have flexible time off. This last year, we started offering all of our employees a minimum of three weeks of vacation or 120 hours of vacation starting on day one. There are no um, nothing put on that and people can carry that over up to about 320 hours and or they can cash it out. So it's whatever is most important to that person. And then um, our, our really unique benefit that our employees have really wrapped um, their arms around is our annual well-being reimbursement. So a lot of companies will say, you get a, a you know a well-being re reimbursement, and it's got to go to something related to your physical health, right? We'll help you with a gym membership. We'll help you um, have some money towards something that makes you physically healthier. What we did is we created a uh, an annual reimbursement of three hundred dollars for anything that you say helps your well-being. It doesn't matter what it is. You have to fill out a, a little form and attach a receipt. Um, and we reimburse, we reimburse you up to $300 for whatever. I've taken trips to see my daughter on an internship. My, my daughter's worked here over the summer as interns. And so we use, we give this to all of our employees. My, my daughters, one used it for their college books. One used it to um, furnish their college apartment. Like it's about what brings you well-being instead of the business defining it for the employee. That is really cool. I really like that. Um, so then I heard uh, Kate say that they do surveys. Michelle, do you do any surveys with your employees and how often do you do that? And what kind of um, management involvement do you have with those results and, sure. and, and response to those? We do an annual employee survey. Um, nice. That's the, for all of our, our employees. Um, it is, our CEO doesn't read every comment because mm -hmm. I think last year we had over 30,000 comments because we wow. have comments for every question. <laughs> um, so we we do filter them on some level, but I read every comment for wow. our plant. And um, we, we take that and then we create action plans. But it's not just at the department level. So within our departments, each of the leaders of the, like a line, an assembly line, they have to have an action plan for their specific survey, because what happens on line one in our ultimate casement department might be different than what happens in a different department. And we want the, the work that's going to go forward to really impact the employees. And mm -hmm. so not only do we do the survey and create the action plan, but then we monitor that throughout the year and ask some questions and provide some data around that. In addition to that, we also, within our first two years of employment, we do surveys at 30, 90, six months, one year and two years to gauge and see how our employees are doing over that time and see where things are falling and how they feel about really eight different topics to help them stay, but also help them find the right job. It's a chance for them to sit in addition to doing the, the actual survey, they sit down with the leader at each of those times. And that leader is asking them about what they like about their job, what they don't like. Is there something you would like to do? And so we it allows people to move around and find the right place for them within Marvin. That is really great. So, so then Veronica, with I'm assuming that Caribou also does surveying. And then how do you ensure that um, your management is involved in those responses and put some of that information um, in place and, and, and that the employees actually feel that they're heard. Yeah, so um, we do surveys every year on a variety of different topics. Um, one of the most impactful ones that I can recall right now um, was one we did last year on kind of the overall benefits package, which is perfect for this meeting. Um, we asked all of our employees, like, what do you like? What don't you like? What could we improve? What do you want to see next year in benefits? And our benefits coordinator really dug into those answers and really 
started to make changes. So for the last few years, we haven't increased the price of our health insurance for employees. It stayed flat because we heard from them that they don't want to have to pay more right now. So we said, yeah, we're not going to make you pay more right now. We hear you. Um, we heard at the beginning of COVID from those surveys for, about our health insurance and benefits that they really needed more mental health support. And so we said, got it, heard you. And we launched a free online mental health service for all of our employees and their immediate families to have access to. So like my daughter uses it for, she has terrible anxiety, as every 11 year old does. And she uses it because she has access to it through the my company and she's able to get some of that therapy, get some of that talking, learn how to cope better and how to manage. So we directly hear them and we take action on it because if we're putting out a survey and nothing happens, why are we putting out the survey? And everyone's going to feel unheard. And that's when you get that turnover. And that's when you get that decrease in participation because they saw last year you did nothing. So then why should we tell you this year? So we make sure that out of those surveys comes direct action items, comes direct plans. Um, one of the other results we heard from that is they want to have more one-on-one -on -one time with their leaders and develop and talk about those next steps. So every single week I sit down with my leader for anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and we talk about what do I need help on? We talk about where that next step is, where do I need to develop, what I could be working on, how I can lean in on some of these projects I might have passion on to really make sure my development is nonstop. And all of our leaders within our organization did that because of what they heard from those surveys. So that's kind of what we do. We just, we hear, we listen, we create those action plans because it's what you're supposed to do as an employer. It's 100% true. The action plan has to happen. Otherwise, the employees do not feel heard. Yeah. Great. So um, one of the things that I want to dive a little bit more into is like the benefits that are actually offered. So what are some of the benefits or perks um, that you offer that are different than your competitors? And, you know, how does your manage management support these benefits? Uh, to ensure employees um, are taking advantage of them or are aware of them. I'm going to start with you, Veronica. Oh, for sure. Um, so when we launched the mental health thing, uh, the mental health online services, we saw a very low engagement rate at first. We're like, everyone wanted this. What's going on? Why is this happening? This was like our number one thing that everyone wanted. And then we realized nobody knew it was there. Uh, uh, nobody really dug deep into the, the benefits package information and read through. So we have an annual meeting where everyone, all of our GMs, all of our district managers, all of our support center all go to this annual meeting for three days and we're like, this is the perfect spot. Um, and we had the, the provider set up a table, interact, really give the information. And we started talking about it more because if you don't talk about the benefits, if you don't discuss it on a regular basis, people forget it's there. Um, the other thing that we do to really kind of highlight it is within our ERG groups at Caribou, um, I'm one of the leaders on our LGBTQ plus one. And uh, we had a lot of questions in that group about what do we offer for to transition services or mental health or all of that. And it surprised me because I was like, I'm on the HR team. How do you not know? Um, so I was able to do a really good post on there and give them all the links and information and just really communicate it. Um, we have our managers are very open books, so they don't hide things. If you're wanting something, if you have a question about something, let us know, like immediately let us know. We have a ticketing system um, that we use that everyone from our part-time employee all the way up to our CEO can put in a ticket and ask about one of our benefits and an HR person will respond and will support you in that. And just making sure that they have access, they have the information or if they don't, we're getting them, whether it be posters in the back rooms of our store, our stores or even on calls, like our we have quarterly calls announcing it on those calls, dropping the links in the chat, really making sure it's something that we're consistently talking about and consistently providing access to rather than creating it and kind of hiding it on page 36 of the employee handbook. Right. <laughs> no one's going to read page 36 of the employee handbook unless they absolutely have to. So it's a constant conversation. Right. I love it. Kate, what are some of the fringe benefits that you offer or have, have had to change in recent years um, to keep up 
with um, employee responses and and how do you make sure that employees are using those benefits? Yeah, so I would say, um, you know, we haven't been lucky. We've been lucky enough not to have to change a lot of our core benefits. We've mm-hmm. made some in- enhancements um, to, you know, whether it's because of the pandemic or how our work, you know, we used to be a everyone was on site now we're more virtual um so exploring to more enhance those uh benefits offered um you know we've always offered tuition reimbursement um we uh, we added pet insurance that was one that was important to people um we always do a a benefits um what do we call it we a benefits fair um, so kind of right before open enrollment, uh, we we ask all our vendors, you know, do you want to come on site? Um, during the pandemic, it was virtual, but come on site and be there with tables for employees to come ask questions. Um, really, and these are the representatives that support our organization. Um, so they can talk to them one on one. We have an employee assistance program um, from our 401k vendor, we've really increased the options available to people, Um, financial seminars, free meetings with financial reps, um, free videos um, and options through the, they call it the well, um, knowing that that's important for people. Um, We have, I just thought of another one, um, and literally went in my head and out (laughs) the other way um oh we've increased like pto options too we added birthday pto nice um we first when we first did it it was i believe you had to be there for a year and then you were eligible um we kind of heard from people well you know that didn't go over so well so it it literally is you're eligible right away um for the birthday pto we've also added business volunteer time off and volunteer time off um and that is reflective of our culture and values it's important to be involved in the in the communities we serve it's important to support the business and you know acknowledging that for some individuals um you know if they, especially if they're non-exempt they can't just walk away for a half day or a day to do these things that they want to do and miss out on the pay. Um, So, but it's also a way to get um, individuals who maybe that's important for them to get to participate. Um, We also have an employee, um, an EAG, but we are also launching employee research group or employee resource groups, excuse me. Um, It's actually something we tried to do back in 2015. And then unfortunately we did have to lay off because we lost an RFP, but we are relaunching them um, as part of our DEI commitment, um, which Hillary, our CEO, has uh, been very vocal about and all our leaders and employees about becoming an anti-racist organization. So um, excited about that benefit as well. That is great. I love the pet insurance. That's cute. That's yeah. something for the younger generations that they like that as well. So yes. thinking all generations uh, in And mind. we're always evaluating. So, <laughs> you know, people, will, we have an, an open not an open forum, but a way for people to share potential benefits. We're evaluating benefits because we are always changing. Um, And if we don't change, um, you know, we're going to be left behind and, um, you know, people are going to not be happy and we want our workforce engaged and happy. That's, That's what it's all about. I love it. Michelle, did you have anything that you wanted to add about some of the different perks or benefits that you offer um, to to your employees and how you support them? Sure. Well, we talked about the the better living benefit, which is one of our favorites, but we do a couple of other things. Um, We, in addition to that on-site mental health support, we have engaged with another company who Uh, our care partners, and they come in and talk to our employees. They walk around. They just provide holistic services, um, referrals to different groups, different ways to um, connect with, whether it's a social service agency, whether it's an addiction um, service, whether it's 
hey, I just don't even know where to go find childcare. Like they come in and help our employees with these things, which takes some burden off the HR team, right? Having to, to kind of act in that space as well. Another wonderful one is um, how we connect with our communities. So uh, we have Bright Squads who organize and engage in meaningful meaningful community contributions across all our different communities, uh, different charities, different fundraisers, things like that, that our employees can participate in. In our factory, we bring things in for them to do on breaks and lunchtime so they can still participate, even though they have to be out on the floor building windows at other times. Um, and then in addition to that, we have a Brighter Days Fund. That fund provides financial assistance in times of hardship and is funded by a company match to our employee donations. So um, our employees are giving to that, uh, our company is giving to that, and then there's a process where they can apply for, for grants up to $3,500 to help with hardships that come up in their life, whether it be, you know, cars broke down, um, somebody, they need some help with, you know, even meeting their deductible because you have to do that with health insurance, right? And if something big comes up, sometimes that's a, a big thing. And so that Brighter Days Fund really helps support our employees all the way around um, and make sure that they feel cared for. Wonderful. Well, this has gone super, super fast. I, I really appreciate it. Um, we have so many more questions, lots that came in through chat. We're going to um, shift gears just for a quick second. We're going to uh, finalize um, Workforce Wednesday, and then we're going to switch to our Unplugged, where everybody can join in from uh, the audience. So I'm going to transfer over to Shayla, and then um, we will be right back with some more information. So Shayla, you are up. Yes, yeah, so um, please join us next month for um, our next Workforce Wednesday, which is going to be on May 1st. Um, we're going to be titling that one, Implu imp ugh, words will not work today, Improved Employee Engagement Through Authentic Leadership. So we're going to be discussing a lot of topics um, related to authentic leadership, such as what is authentic leadership, um, authentic leadership ties to improving um, employee engagement, which we touched on some of that today, such as transparency and a few other things, um, and what to do if um, you currently are not an authentic leader, which um, some of those we actually kind of hinted about in today's session. So I'm really excited that um, that session is following this one. I think they'll tie really, really well together. So be sure to join us for next month's um, event. Registration is now open. You can also check out um, all the other upcoming sessions, resources, and blogs um, on our Workforce Wednesday um, a page and you also can sign up to receive our emails and reminders about these events and our newsletters and various blogs on and what our team is up to on our site. So thank you. We're going to switch over. Um, thank you for joining us. Um,